This is Dr. HMS speaking, and we're going to begin with our skin series. The first topic we're going to discuss is pimples, common pimples. So what are pimples? Common pimples are otherwise known in medical terms as acne vulgaris. What is vulgaris? Vulgaris is derived from a Latin adjective meaning common or something that's derived from the masses. That is the common people. Acne vulgaris is a common long-standing skin disease and it involves the blocking or inflammation of the hair follicles as well as the sebaceous glands in the skin. Acne is commonly found on the face, the back, the chest and the upper arms. These are areas that have a lot of sebaceous follicles. So what do we know so far about the epidemiology of acne vulgaris or common pimples? It is commonly seen in the Mediterranean region and also in black ethnicities. This higher level of acne has been linked to the use of hair creams and other pomades. North American whites are also prone to acne. Sometimes some newborns can be born with acne and this is because of the hormones that have been passed on from the mother. This usually goes away after a few days. Acne may not only be limited to adolescence and can occur even in adults, especially these days. It's the most common skin disease in the world and it affects a large number of humans at some point in time during their lives. As much as 20% of individuals can have severe acne vulgaris, and this can result in permanent scarring, not just on the face, but also on the mind. What do I mean by this? Some people actually become anxious and depressed because of the cosmetic effects on the skin. It has been found out that this excess sebum production in the skin of those with acne vulgaris is promoted by hormones known as androgens. And because of this higher amount of hormones in girls about to undergo puberty, the condition is commonly seen in them. However, however as I'm sure you're aware, males are not immune to common pimples. There are several reasons why common pimples occur. Firstly, the follicles grow in increased amounts, resulting in the plugging of the follicles. Sebum is also found in the skin of those with common pimples. Bacteria which are commonly found in the skin are also seen. Genetics can also be involved in the physiology of acne. That is, you see it commonly in hereditary fashion, where you find out that some families are more prone to developing common pimples. Some cosmetics and hair creams can make it even worse. Some steroid drugs and other drugs used in epilepsy, iodides and lithium can also cause common pimples. Medical conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very common cause of infertility in the world. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, as well as pregnancy can trigger common pimples. When we apply this, it forms some form of pressure like headbands, shoulder pads, and under wired bras, they can predispose one to acne. Excessive sunlight, surprisingly, can either improve or make it worse. So how does a person suspect he or she has acne vulgaris? There's the appearance of swellings, bumps on the skin, blackheads, whiteheads over the face, the back, the chest, the upper arms. These may be scarring in nature. Let's talk about how acne is diagnosed. So as with all disorders, the doctor is the final call after obtaining information from the patient's history and careful examination. Sometimes the swellings may be painful or reddish in color in lighter skinned individuals. In overwhelming acne, patients actually have symptoms like fever, joint pain, and general unwellbeing. But of course, let's not forget the great psychological impact on the patient. So laboratory tests 
blood tests specifically may be required to rule out conditions such as polycystic ovarian syndrome. Sometimes contents of the skin bumps and lumps are tested to rule out severe infection, especially if the patient doesn't respond to treatment. So how do we treat common pimples? The treatment of common pimples is directed towards its main cause. We all know the main causes, the increase in the follicles and the sebaceous glands, which produce sebum, the causative bacterium, cutie bacterium acne, and the eventual inflammation that occurs on the skin. So the treatment is directed towards preventing all the mentioned. So how do we treat common pimples? The treatment of common pimples is directed towards its main cause. We all know the main causes, the increase in the follicles and the sebaceous glands, which produce sebum, the causative bacterium, cutie bacterium acne, and the eventual inflammation that occurs on the skin. So the treatment is directed towards preventing all the mentioned. The current standard consensus recommends that there's a combination of local application of retinoids and antimicrobials. That is the first line of therapy for almost all patients with acne. This combination treatment has been found to be superior to single therapy treatment with just one type of drug. Some of the drugs that are commonly used to treat common pimples include erythromycin, benzoyl peroxide, clindamycin, azelaic acid, topical dapsone, topical tretinoin, adapalene, isotretinoin, tetracycline, doxycycline, trimethoprim, sulfamethaxazole, spironolactone, and oral contraceptive pills. Usually, when one is on an antibiotic, either by applying on the skin or taking it by mouth, this medication is used together with benzoyl peroxide so that there will not be resistance of the organism to the treatment, which will result in a poor outcome. Before application of the cream, the skin should be clean and dry. When using the creams, one should avoid sunlight because it causes some sensitivity to the sun with peeling and reddening, and of course, pain. So patients need to be counseled that they may have some skin inflammation around the 10th day of treatment. This is so that they will not consider this side effect as an allergy and thus stop treatment. All patients need to be counseled on the side effects of the drug prescription. Treatment may last as long as 12 weeks. Benzoyl peroxide may also be available over the counter and may be included in some soaps, some facial washes and solutions. Some of the side effects of using the antibiotics taken by mouth include vaginal candidiasis as well as pigment deposition in the skin and teeth. Oral contraceptive pills can affect reproduction and some of the drugs can cause damage to the unborn baby. So always consult your doctor before using any drug. What are some other ways of treating acne vulgaris? Now, what we eat in our diets really matters. Low glycemic diets are, are ideal. We should avoid junk food and high carbohydrate containing meals. This helps to manage acne. Skimmed milk, funnily enough, has also been found to be a causative agent of acne. What are some other ways of treating? So let's talk about some of the procedures that can be carried out for acne. We may actually be able to extract the contents of the bumps from the face. This may give some relief. Steroid injections into the skin lesions can help as well. Peels such as salicylic acid or glycolic acid, facial peels have been helpful. Laser therapy and photodynamic therapy, PDT, involves applying a photosensitizer 
to the skin and then applying light to activate it. This can generate oxygen and helps in injuring the abnormal skin glands and also reducing the bacterial load. There is also the option for dermal fillers to aid in the acne scarring. Prognosis. Overall, the prognosis for patients with acne is quite good once treatment commences. If there is good patient education and compliance with treatment. So people, I hope with these few slides, I was able to educate you on common pimples, otherwise known as acne vulgaris. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and enable your bell notifications for new videos.